welcome to the GTX on that DEF CON course 1. In this video, we will be talking about home internet security. Why is home internet security important? The main part that I will stress is public eye. The public eye is basically the internet. Okay? Your home internet is actually public to the entire Internet. What do I mean by this? Well, basically, you have an IP address, okay? That IP address, anybody can connect to. And with that IP address, you have ports. A lot of services that will run on your home network will bind to a specific port, such as printers security cameras you basically get the drift sometimes something bad takes effect that will automatically port forward those ports so they are accessible from your external IP address okay your external IP address say That's one of my old IP addresses. 765-105-70. Say you have a security sync camera system, okay? This runs off to the security cameras that you have set up, okay? And this connects to your router. And then that goes out to the internet, of course, via DSL or coaxial cable. And then you have your home computer where you want to watch your security camera from. Like this the router. You connect to that LAN IP, 192.168.75 or whatever. You connect to that and say it runs off port 8080, a lot new. That's what your security camera is configured for. And then you can connect to that. But with UPnP, UPnP, it can make this port dot dot 8080. So then, when somebody like the GTX on the DEFCON team scans the 765 range, when we get to this part and we scan that 4880. We're going to see that security system. So, how can you secure yourself? I'm going to give you some tips. These tips, I would definitely abide by. The first networking tip is to disable UPnP. Even though some gamers like it, disable UPnP or you will be in the crap boat. Okay? See it? Disable UPnP. I don't know if that camera can see it or not. So that's the first step, is to disable UPnP, okay? Next step.
not respond to any ICMP types. Echo type definitely do not respond to that. So in other words, block ping. Okay? Next step. Drop rather than reject. Okay? You also want to make sure that the firewall is dropping the packets and not rejecting. So if it's rejecting, me and all I can basically say, oh, that host is up. That IP address, they're up. That is an active connection. Okay? If you drop the packets, you look stealth. Okay? So, disable UPP, don't reply to ICMP um, messages, and drop rather than reject, okay? Drop is a lot better than reject. Reject means we can see that, okay? Okay, the next step. Change usernames. And passwords and use key pass basically change the default username on your router most of them is admin so change it to something complex and then change the password along with that and make it random so use key pass and you can store the secured password in key pass you want to change your router passwords security cameras, printers, everything that is connected to the network. Make sure that its default user interface they can connect to via the network is secured. Also, use slash um, enforce SSL. If your router um, supports Connecting to the user interface via SSL, and you could disable the port 80 and the you know insecure. Then set your router to only um, so you can only connect to the user interface via SSL. That will also pop up a lot. So use slash enforce SSL. Okay. Another thing, and only port forward. Necessary things. Okay. Okay. A lot of people um, pull forward the security cameras, and along with that, they have the default passwords. Okay. Some people, well, they think that their firewall protects them and all that, and they connect to a VLAN. Um, but they don't know that the camera's public. That's where UPnP took place. Okay. So these are some steps that you must follow the security network. I'm going to tell you some stuff that the two wire will do. The two wire will do all of this, okay? First off, its default password is the serial number that's on the back of this, and you're not going to be able to see the serial number. That camera's not that high def, okay? So that's the default password for two wires is their serial number, okay? So that was how two wire to an effect to not um, exploit. Also, another thing to disable would be remote access on routers. A lot of routers, they have remote access. Some are on by default. Disable that and firewall the port that you used. Just in case, okay, go in there and hard firewall the port that that remote administration tool used. Even though it's disabled, if you even though if you disabled it, that's not good enough. It can still reject or something like that, you can still have a pinhole in the firewall. So go in there, into the firewall, and hard code it to, to block packets from that port there that the remote administration uses. Like on the two wire, the remote administration um, is not on by default, but um, it uses port 5001 5, for the remote administration. So what you can do is you can go in there and um, hard firewall that, okay? So do not respond to pings, drop packets, 
um, change all the fault usernames and passwords on the rabbit, regardless. Okay? Um, use and force SSL. Only port forward and necessary things. So this is the list. And yes, this list will be listed on the GTX on that um, Jetstream website. Okay? So these are things that you can secure yourself from those whole attacks. Now let me explain how um, how our DEF CON scanner works. We used um, a powerful program called Inmap, and it's a really, really good program. Okay? There's all kinds of scanning techniques that you can put in place. When we scan huge IP ranges, like right now, uh, right now we're scanning like, the entire Comcast range. Okay? And um, I've been very in interested in residential connections because residential is the most vulnerable. Did you know that? They are. Because they usually have stuff like, um, let me just list a few things what, they, what people have. Security cameras, systems, or whatever. I see a lot of those. I see a lot of printers. Router. I see a lot of router user interfaces, which in there, we can um, change your DNS settings and DNS hijack you, which is a bad thing, okay? Um, basically, what we can do is we can change, you can go into your router, we can see your SSID, um, we can, um, See so your password. We can do we can do basically anything with your network if we have access to the router. And um, you saw how many tabs that were um, open, okay? And there's just a crap ton of tabs that we had open just in my local IP range. Each one of those was either a router, a printer, or something, okay? But this is these are some of the things I see a lot, okay? I see a lot of these. Um, the main one that I, I really see a lot would be security cameras. People really need to lock these down. And with these security cameras, they may be more advanced where you can talk through them. You can move around, you have infrared so you can see in the dark, you can zoom in, all kinds of stuff. And a lot of them also have audio so you can also hear conversations and stuff. Basically, That's basically um, invasion of privacy, and um, a lot of people um, could be watching you right now. You don't know. So you have a security camera. Um, definitely make sure it's hardened and locked down. Personally, if I have a security camera system, and I know I will. I mean, I really want one. I want a full house. I want to have. I want to have like t 24 cameras throughout the entire house, outside, everywhere. I would limit it to LAN access, personally. And then what I'd have is I'd have a monitor in my room, like a big, maybe a big screen or something, and it would run over the network, and it would be on LAN. Of course, it would be secured and party. And I could sit there and view the cameras that way. That's personally how I would do it. Some people feel that, oh, when, we're at, when I'm at my work, I want to be able to see the camera, and you think that no password or their password password would be sufficient because oh it's my own IP and all that nobody's gonna connect to it. Well you know your IP is external. It's on the internet. Okay. You're within the IPv4 range. Somebody can hit you. As in connect your IP, port scan you, that kind of thing. Um they can see anything, okay? I've had, generally, uh, the Jetstream server, if it's kind of public, I mean, it has a bunch of stuff running off of it. I get two to six TCP port scans a day, okay? Generally speaking, okay? So just imagine, what if one of those people are actually wanting to see something, you know? This is why you secure your whole networking and security, okay? major thing that's, that's played the that play part is the stuff on your network, okay? Oh, 
And it was something else that I see a lot of. FTP slash NAS. I see a lot of that. The thing is, is a lot of people have external hard drives and stuff on that connects to the network. And of course, you, that has a user interface you can connect to with any computer on your LAN network and share files. Thing is, is um, UPnP can also play a role in that. Automatically put forward it. And then, it's your NAS. A lot of NASs have a built in FTP server functionality. Abraham. So we can connect to anybody's NAS via FTP, which those FTPs servers, the FTP daemon that runs on these network attached storage devices, it usually allows anonymous access to it, which that should be disabled. So if you have a NAS, um, disable the FTP. Okay? Disable FTP. Disable it. If you want to keep it, that's your role. But if you do keep it, turn off anonymous access. Turn it off. That basically means all you gotta do is put username anonymous and no password. Connect and I can see all your drives, everything. Everything. I've ran into about 35? Yeah. 